Summertime is here, deathlings. Who's ready for some fun in the sun? Not me. So let's talk about another long-standing vacation tradition. Disaster tourism. Disaster tourism is exactly what it sounds like. Visiting sites of mass death, wars, atrocities, natural disasters, a summer vacation at Ground Zero in Manhattan, Chernobyl, concentration camps. If you go too soon after a disaster has occurred, say, to the Lower Ninth Ward in New Orleans, the impulse is seen as voyeuristic and disrespectful. But if you wait long enough, you're just interested in history, right? History buff. Over a million people visit the battlefield at Gettysburg every year, where around 50,000 people died over a three-day period. 1.5 million people now visit Auschwitz yearly. They've had to encourage online reservations so they don't have to turn people away at the gates. What these numbers tell us is that there's a strong human impulse to come visit these places. You're just interested in history. Is, in this case, also code for You're just interested in mass death. Which is okay. Don't try and deny that curiosity in that part of yourself, especially if there are historical memorials set up and places to safely and respectfully visit. But what happens when our desire to see or even experience these disasters and death tiptoes over the line of good taste? I'm looking at you, Thomas Cook, who used to run an English travel agency where the travel was to public executions. Some of you might know this about me, but I was a medieval history major at university, and I studied witches, and demon babies, and witches giving birth to demon babies, and I had a concept called Witch to Kitch, which is far less groundbreaking in retrospect. Tens of thousands of people, mostly women, were brutally tortured into false confessions of sex with the devil, and then executed, burnt alive at the stake. So what's the waiting period before we turn atrocities like that into this? Campy, sexy witches, Halloween costume witches, Disney witches. How long after the Titanic sinks to the bottom of the ocean do we send our kids down this big blow up slide version of it? Yes, that's, that's totally real. Perhaps the biggest offender in this regard is none other than Coney Island in Brooklyn with their recreations and reenactments of disasters and death. September 1900, a Category 4 hurricane sweeps through Galveston, Texas. A surge of water flooded the island, and when the waters receded, there were wagon loads of corpses to be collected. Somewhere around 7,000 people died, making it the worst weather-related disaster in American history. Just two years later, in 1902, an attraction opens on Coney Island called Galveston Flood. You would go into the building and watch real and fake water destroy models of the city and the harbor. There were mechanics and lights, and here's an advertisement from the period. Children are free. The flood keeps the auditorium cool. Gotta beat that summer heat, I guess. Oh wait, there's more. Two years seems to be the waiting period because two years after the eruption of Mount Pele in the Caribbean islands, where molten hot volcanic ash and dust cloud rolled down to the city, setting everything in its path on fire and killing approximately 30,000 people, they had an attraction for that. The auditorium sat 1,200 people, allowing them to watch lava devour homes. There was an attraction where you could watch firefighters pulling people from a burning tenement building, but they replaced that when the 1906 San Francisco earthquake happened. They only waited a couple months before opening that attraction. There was a cast of 350 people, and every night they destroyed the city through smoke and pyrotechnics. Ironically, the Coney Island Park this attraction was in would itself burn to the ground only five years later. Now, maybe I'm being too harsh on these attractions, which also included the eruption of Mount Vesuvius, the end of the world, you know, the, the destruction of, of all humankind. It can be argued that the reason that people wanted to go to attractions like this, the reason people did go to attractions like this, is that in the early 1900s, they didn't have big Hollywood blockbuster disaster films. They didn't have cable news streaming 24 seven from the site of the latest disaster. People had to just read about these events and going to these attractions gave them some approximation of being around these disasters and deaths. But even with disaster, 
disaster movies, dark places on the internet, cable news, people are still, to this day, building ill-advised death attractions. Last year in London, a Jack the Ripper museum opened, which in and of itself is not a bad idea. But apparently when you walked in, you would hear loops of his female victims screaming, waxwork corpses of his victims, all without actually telling the stories of the women who died. This is from an official press release they sent out last Halloween. For one weekend only, museum visitors can meet Jack the Ripper. Dare you have a selfie with him in his sitting room where he planned his horrific murders? Or how about a picture with Jack together with the body of Catherine Eddowes? Just Google Jack the Ripper Museum. It's a mess. Done respectfully, I am a big proponent of death destinations. Deathstinations, as I call them, if you've been watching this series for a while. But I would love to hear if you're planning on going to any this summer, if you have any places you've been in the past that were done really well, or some that made you go, um, maybe this is kind of disrespectful and shouldn't be a tourist destination. Brought to you with support from People's Memorial Association and the Co-op Funeral Home and donations from viewers like you. Cheers.